In this video, we're going to be discussing some of the latest Fallout 76 news, and we have quite a bit to talk about in this one. Just recently, I talked about how there was a major hacking problem, what I would argue was one of Fallout 76's largest problems to date. This story ended up getting picked up by several other news sources, it got quite a bit more attention, but earlier today we also saw what I would describe as a pretty massive response from Bethesda, and a overwhelmingly positive one. But firstly, what has to be done is a correction. In my previous video on this topic, I showed you guys a variety of legendaries people are creating in-game, people are doing 5 stars, 3 stars, but also seemingly a 10 star also, this being quite a bit more overpowered than even all of the rest, except this 10 star is just a Photoshop job. It was originally created as a joke passed around private communities, but then went public and was posted around along with many of those other images. So this is fake, this was never possible in Fallout 76, although, and I want to be super clear about this, this is real. This was possible, I've seen multiple iterations of this confirmed by multiple people, I've seen some users now claiming even those 5 star legendary pictures were faked, but no, those are legitimate. As of right now, in Fallout 76, the limit is 5 legendary effects on a single weapon or armor. And just for some updates around this hacking problem overall, if you weren't familiar with the original, basically it was possible to spawn in any prop, NPC, or even create new legendary items in Fallout 76. This included a lot of human NPCs, we saw several videos posted around this, Preston of course was one of the most featured just for the meme ability, but separately things like aliens or Wooby who was originally found in the Fallout 76 dev room. There's a lot of content and footage now online and on the internet, several articles were eventually posted, this was deliberate that people creating this stuff reached out to some news outlets as I mentioned in my original video, but even further the far more concerning part around this was users ability to create legendary items. So you could manually create these giving them the best effects in the game. And this wasn't even restricted to just weapons and armors, there was actually some other apparel items or miscellaneous items that could also get these effects, including things like power armor, which could create a truly stacked set of power armor. Before I made my original video talking about all this, pretty much everything I talked about was already known by Bethesda or reported to them by one party or another, and just earlier today we saw a fairly massive response from Bethesda on this issue. They announced late last night that a new update would be coming to Fallout 76, and following the release of this one they describe how, during today's downtime we removed items that could only be obtained by cheating through abuse of an exploit, we also implemented additional measures to address that exploit. So this is huge, because what it's actually going to do is prevent everything I just talked about. You can no longer spawn in human NPCs, props, or create legendaries in Fallout 76. The original tool that was used for this is no longer functional, the creator of that tool actually posted this image kind of saying, yeah, no, I can't do it anymore. And for some context, all of those weird things you see in the background, the way they got human NPCs to work is turning things like chairs into a human NPC. But even further, all the 4 and 5 star legendary weapons and some of the armors were removed from Fallout 76. So if you bought a 5 star off somebody, you should hypothetically no longer have it, at least based off the reports that are coming in thus far. This is huge, and actually really commendable by Bethesda that they were so quick to act on this. A serious concern I had around this was that they wouldn't get this fixed in time for the holiday break. Obviously Christmas is just one week away now, a lot of people are taking off by the end of this week, and if this was allowed to continue for several weeks into mid-January, it would become a much larger and fairly massive problem. So huge props to Bethesda for being quick about addressing it. Although this was definitely not a comprehensive removal. Even though basically all the 4 and 5 star legendaries and the ability to spawn in the NPCs, props, or create legendaries was removed, there still were some things that weren't removed. For example, many of the people that actually spawned in NPCs or props still have them. Even after this update, people would log into their camp and still find some of those third party things sitting there. Whether it be containers with all of the various plans in them, some Fallout 4 assets, or even some human NPCs seem to remain. With this, it was also possible to spawn in legendary power armor or certain legendary armors. It seems like those were not removed. And finally, what is the most concerning, and one of the main concerns I raised in my original video, it does not appear as of yet that any of the 3 star legendaries were removed. A 3 star legendary is something you could just get in game, 
So if you were to manually create one of these and spawn it in into Fallout 76, at first glance, you couldn't immediately tell if this was legitimate or illegitimate. Conversely, obviously a four star or five star unattainable and that immediately is a major red flag. So all of that content still does exist. It seems like Bethesda has an ability to track all of this, but it's one of those things where they're tracking things so meticulously, it's almost hard to just do a clear wipe of all of them. It'll require quite a bit of additional effort to actually identify and locate all of these three stars. So hopefully at some point a wipe on those is coming, albeit we don't really know when exactly this will be. And the longer this does persist, the more concern there is over people trading these away and some legitimate people actually spending caps or trading items for illegitimate items. And even further, the other fairly large issue around this, the previously used dupe method that was also just introduced with all of these other tools does still persist in game. It's still is fully functional. So I would argue this was definitely a great first step from Bethesda. I think the key part here was actually kind of cutting off the supply. I definitely think the argument could be made against Bethesda saying this really shouldn't have been possible in the first place. And although I do agree with that, I feel like how timely they were with responding to this one as it really was just a few days, not even a full week before it became quite well known is a really good sign from them. They were clearly listening and they acted quite quickly. The fact that these items are no longer able to be created and spawned in is definitely a huge plus. Plus. But obviously there are still several steps to be taken, getting rid of the dupe because dupes in general are a massive problem with this game and this one in particular is now fairly well known among certain communities. But even beyond that, actually getting rid of some of those illegitimate three star legendaries, as now there is a fairly large influx of just super good three stars, where even some of the containers that contain one of every single plan in the game. Those are still around, and it can have a major effect on the economy if they do persist or aren't removed appropriately. Outside of that, also with this update, they made a change to Sanitrons. As we've talked about in the past, Fallout 76 is currently going through its holiday event. So sometimes you'll encounter a holiday scorch who will drop a holiday present giving you a random item. The Sanitron also will randomly find these items, but on release it was a really, really low percentage. Like you were only finding one of the worst tier items every few hours. So just a really nice gesture from Bethesda, they actually increased this number. So now your Sanitron will find more holiday gifts. Mine found one almost immediately following this update. I don't know the exact rate. It wasn't publicly stated and it hasn't been data mined as of the time of me recording this video. But this is another really positive improvement. I'm happy they did this, and very much so in the Christmas spirit. And just overall, this holiday event has been a really good addition, having some pretty interesting impacts on the game. Part of the way you can get some of these holiday gifts is actually by finding a holiday scorch, but the other way, and one of the preferable ways, is you could just buy wrapping paper. This is sold at any of the vendors, and from here you could actually craft a holiday gift. I've heard reports from numerous people how they have spent a lot of caps on this. Like users going from having several hundred thousand caps across various accounts to actually only having a few thousand now. This due to the fact that some of the plans you can get from these gifts are really, really rare. But it seems like this has actually had a fairly large effect for some players as to how many people buy items from their in-game shops because everyone's kind of cap poor now. This will likely recover because caps are abundant resource in Fallout 76. Many players actually have issues with capping out on their character and have to create additional characters to store the extra caps. But I just thought that was kind of a funny occurrence happening from this holiday event and a pretty cool one. Separately, we also saw update to Battle Royale in Fallout 76. In patch 16, they made it so if you had less players on a server, the initial map size would be smaller. It seemed like this change would happen around 32 to 33 players. And this was incredible. I absolutely adored this change. As I mentioned in my video, it actually got me playing this mode a lot more even while not filming. It made the combat more fast paced. I found myself forced to use weapons or items I didn't typically use. But just yesterday, Bethesda has gone ahead and reverted that change. They mentioned how we've been reading feedback from those of you who have been sharing your experience with the smaller starting area, and we agree that matches that begin this way have been ending a little too quickly. Additionally, more players have been encountering small starting areas than we had intended. And at the end of the saying, we are going to take some time to evaluate potential improvements we may be able to make in the future. So I think with this one, I might just be heavily in the minority. I, again, really love that change, mostly because I think when I play the game is odd. I do YouTube for a job, so I'm filming footage during the day when everyone is at their actual job at work. 
So typically I only get match sizes of 20 or so players, it's relatively small. And I like the smaller map because it saved me time from just wandering around the world, getting totally kitted out, and it made faster paced and more interesting gameplay. I would love to see additional changes like this in the future, maybe making the map size smaller but not quite as small, but for now it kind of has tainted the mode a bit for me. I was really enjoying that change and now going back to the traditional I find myself just wandering around for ages again which I wasn't really a fan of but I can recognize that some other people do enjoy that aspect of it quite a bit more than me. So overall, I would say this hotfix or update to Fallout 76 from Bethesda and the response overall to this hacking issue was timely and well executed. Thus far, there haven't been any reports of unforeseen consequences of any of these changes, but of course there is still quite a bit more to be done and hopefully we see that in the future in the way of further item removals, but also of course just better anti-cheat. Hopefully you guys found this video informative, hopefully you were enjoying Fallout 76's holiday event, but with all of that being said, I thank you for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Later!